This is the talk of Music City Real Estate. Welcome back to another episode of the talk of Music City Real Estate. Where we educate and motivate all things real estate. Hey everybody, my name is Monty Moore with Realty One Group Music City. Hey, and I'm Carrie Ann with CMG Financial and My Mortgage Team. Every week we'll be posting new episodes of Chock Full of Nashville Real Estate Value. Yes, and you can follow along and subscribe at the top of musiccity.com. Got a question for us? Ask at questions at Talk Music City. Very good. Well, we've got Mr. Jason Hoover with the one and only. He is Jason part Hoover. of our team now here at the Top of Music City. We, Welcome back. We appreciate Jason. you, Jason, for coming yet? back. <laughs> you are. He is, and he's got our colors on today. Hey, check it out. I got the shirt. You got your dark. Well, at least safe with the, the black. Yeah. Here, oh, Monty's got it on today, too. Yeah. I love Good talk it. of hey, Music so City Real Estate. social distancing. I am still quarantining myself. My nephew... Uh, was born recently and I cannot wait to get permission to go give him a hug and a kiss because as soon as I do, I'm breaking out. I'm out of the house. <laughs> and I cannot wait because I am about over working from home. Let me tell uh, you. I bet you are. So the baby is has, <laughs> the baby is with us now, right? I didn't hear that. That's awesome. Yes, good. yes. And Fantastic. he was a healthy baby boy, six pound, 10 ounces, and he's got all of his fingers and toes. And it's just a blessing for my sister and brother in law. And I'm so, so very happy. Do they really name um, him Montel? Henry Brian Hedges. Oh, man. So <laughs> cute. It's a good Love chance it. to name him Montel. I'm always looking for somebody to, you know, to uh, <laughs> carry on the tradition here with, you know, anyway. <laughs> well, they would be best friends with Jason because they are baseball fans like crazy. Oh, they're good people. And All right. Henry was so they can call him Hank. And then wow. Henry also is because they're huge Titans fans. So they're super excited. They've got season tickets right somewhere, club level or something. So when Henry comes out, they're going to be like, Henry, Henry. And so they're going to think that's for it. the little ones too. So it's kind of a cool, <laughs> cool mixture. So uh, you would love this, Jason. So my sister is a huge Red Sox fan. Super, we're New Englanders, right? And so huge Red Sox fan. And so her birthday was on the third and her husband got, jd martinez to send her a video birthday video no way. Wow. and he did so good and it was just like him in his living room just talking to jennifer like it was no big deal That's about awesome. jd coming up and i'm so glad you're calling him jd like he went on and on, <laughs> and on. it was so cool it was an awesome so that is you awesome. being a baseball fan you you can appreciate you can appreciate yeah. that so Love Not that. that you're a Sox fan, but you are True. at least in the yeah, same let's make, make realm. That clear. <laughs> make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> at least he's in baseball. We're right. <laughs> oh, that's right. Hey, before we get started, we have an amazing sponsor. We really appreciate Music City Removal. You know, they are the number one junk removal service here in Nashville from residential, commercial, and construction. They're experts in ridding you of junk. Their cost includes labor and dumping fees and without any hidden or added expenses. Whether you need a full clean out or just one item removed, they have you covered. Carrie Ann, just recently, you know, we, we I listed a property that there was so much junk left from the tenant. I was blown away. I mean, it was ah. pickup loads. And so so we're so thankful for Music City Removal Team that knows the importance of and respect of trust and trust while someone's in your home. They understand the inconvenience of junk left behind by previous homeowners and tenants and are determined to provide an affordable and customer focused junk removal service that puts you first. For a free e online estimate, go to musiccityremoval.com. That's musiccityremoval.com. Yes, Music City Removal, because clutter ain't cute. Oh, I sure wasn't cute <laughs> what I was talking about. It was nasty. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I mean, that is, you forget how much, just by living, how much you can, you know, hoard. I remember my mom, we moved her out of that house she had for, what, 35 years, you know, and I think she still had... Not that it was junk, but she had, you know, the <laughs> Halloween costumes from the four of us time, 12 years, you know, and <laughs> it was just like so much stuff. I think we had dumpster after dumpster and she's yanking the stuff back as Aww. we're trying to throw it in the dumpster. You know, that kind of, yeah. you can't get rid of it. Those memories, those memories. So, yeah, we all can gather a lot of a lot of things that we just can't let go. So, well, too quick, funny. I, I know we got a, a show here to talk about, but I want to share one little memory of my uh, my little boy, Cohen. Uh, yeah, we we were getting rid of 
you know, stuff as they grow up. And, you know, he was small, but he grew out of his, uh, what you, the, uh, the, push thing the um, stroller so a stroller, a stroller. Oh. so he couldn't be <laughs> it in the stroller. sounds like <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> yeah. um and so uh we you know she put it i think it was craigslist at the time or how you know yeah far back but had somebody come by to buy it he pitched a fit he was so attached to that thing just started bawling and crying so we had to keep the stroller <laughs> oh, no. never used it kept the stroller for another two years oh, oh too funny oh too that's funny. sweet that's sweet. i love it uh, well, thank just, goodness we're not talking about strollers or babies today. <laughs> that's right. We that's are right. talking. We've got a great uh, show today for all of those real estate agents out there. We're going to talk about being the CEO of our own small businesses within a larger business. So I'm really excited about this because this is one that I talk a lot about even in my industry because we can do so much when we actually understand that concept so right. this is a great the great uh, topic i'm really glad we're talking about it today our industries carrie and as you know are so parallel to one another and and, and feed off of each other and so, so it's so great to be able to run together arm in arm with you and the concepts are universal with our both both of our businesses thank you yeah yeah that's absolutely. exciting <clears throat> so who wants to kick this off jason cool. uh, you're the coach amongst us well, and, and it's one of my, uh, my passions, yeah, being a coach and helping agents out. That's my passion is entrepreneurship. I love entrepreneurs. And, you know, being entrepreneurs, we, we understand the struggles. We understand the ups and the downs, the turns and the twists. And, you know, one minute you're, you're, you're uh, jumping for joy and next minute you're crying in a fetal mm, position underneath mm, the couch. Mm, you know? Only <laughs> real estate can do that for you. you know? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you're on you know, cloud nine. You've you got four people under contract and all of them. You and know, you made the mistake out. of listening, of doing the math. That don't was the, ever don't do, do the, the math. math. Don't that's, ever do the math. That's the very first lesson I teach people. Don't do don't the math. Don't do the math. It's all <laughs> fantasy land. It doesn't matter. You know? But yeah, so it, you know, we have a business and I don't think a lot of people understand that. But the people that are successful actually actually grab hold of that right. and embrace it and treat it like a business. You will not uh, you will not be successful by just luck. No. Now, you may come into this business and you may get lucky that you have some friends and relatives or somebody and you sell a few houses. You know, that's great. You know, good for you that you got off to a good start, but you got to quickly turn that into a, a real business. A real business. And that's what we want to talk about today is what does that look like? Because mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm uh, I don't know what the math is on this or the uh, the numbers, but I'm sure probably well over 80% of agents, maybe even higher than that, don't treat it like a business. Well, I heard I heard earlier today that it actually is um, 87 to 90 percent of the people don't make it the first two years in yeah. the industry. That I think that has something to do with it. They're, they walk into it with unrealistic expectations, sure. not managing what they're they thought they've been watching Property Brothers. They thought that's what it looked like, and somebody oh, told yeah. them, "Hey, you ought to you ought to sell real estate. You like real estate, you know." Uh, not that sounds like fun. Yeah. I like I like floor plans. I like yeah. picking out colors. I mean, that's all good and, and well, mm -hmm. but uh, you've got to you know also you know. Do the business stuff and let's you know let's talk about what that is yeah um so well, you know the, i think i heard a great great uh word like decide right we we need to decide if we actually really want to do this as a business like right. are we committed to treating it as a business because like you said you know for lenders oh this is such an easy job you can make the most money ever and i'm like i'm blind in one eye <laughs> you know i got to like dye my roots every two and a half weeks I mean, this is not anything fun. <laughs> I mean, I love helping clients, but it's not easy money for right. some people that no, thought it was. Nothing easy about you know, it. maybe back in the day when somebody was doing a 228 one day out of a bankruptcy when that was all shade anyways, right? But now, you know, it's it's not that hard. So people are approaching right. your industry or mine because they think it's easy money or it's just glamour. You're in real estate, you get a nice car. Yeah. Right. I'm like, or you're in lending, you get, you know, this, right? And it's so funny. So, you know, deciding, you know, what you really want to see your business as and, you know, that commitment level that you truly want to make, you know, are you really want to be a part-timer? Because you and I both know that, yeah, you can be a part-timer, but eh, you really want to make it. You really need to yeah. commit to this being your, you know, everything. You need to put it all, you know, on the line for it's yourself. It's a lot there. of sacrifice. It is. Yep. Yeah. And so... And that's one of the things that I start with people in the coaching is trying to transition their mindset, not me doing it for them, but ha helping them get to that point of, a, you know, from W2 to a 1099, that Ooh, this, right. this is 
a, this is your new lifestyle. You have chosen this path. You took the red pill. So here we go. <laughs> mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, you got to get out of that W-2 because, uh, you know, they're not feeding you anymore. You're not getting a paycheck if you're not being productive. So mm-hmm. W-2 to 1099 is a huge hurdle for people. And that's mm-hmm. why a lot of people do get out because guess what? Real estate school doesn't teach you that. And so, you know, that's where our coaches come in. We can help you with it if you want to do it. The, um, and the biggest thing is you are the CEO. You are the owner. And guess who your employee is? You are. You are. <laughs> you're, are you going to keep this guy or not? Yeah, <laughs> you know? So if you don't like your employee, then we got a problem. Right. Uh, they either have to change or uh, you're going to have to fire yourself. Right. And then I think yeah. I think one of the beginnings places that this whole thing starts with, I was with a onboarding team earlier today. Thank you, Carrie Ann, for your space, by the way. It's such yeah. a great such a great training uh, space you have over at CMG. Um, but I was with them earlier today and, and talking about, because some of them are, are fairly new to the business, and I said, you got to remember this. Please understand this. Prosperity follows value. It doesn't follow wishing, hoping, needing, thinking it's a fun idea, all those kind of things. It's, it follows value. Don't wish it was easier, like Jim Rohn used to say. Wish, wish you were better. You've got to create value. You've got to become valuable. You've got to start with mm-hmm. becoming valuable to yourself. And then, because how many times have you heard me say, before the message ever matters, people have to believe the messenger. And they can't believe the messenger. If you don't believe the messenger in here yourself, you know, that you haven't renewed your mind to the whole, your own belief, your own conviction that you have the goods, that you're coming from a place of, abundance you're coming from a place of contribution not a survival because you're you've got to make a closing you've got to sell a house in order to pay the bills it doesn't work that way it works about becoming valuable first right yeah yeah and you know i think too you know i come from being um a singer back in the day right i was going to move to nashville make it big and sometimes people forget that they are the product right so you know me as a lender yes i work for a specific lending company but you're selling you right so i'm the celebrity i'm the product i'm that singer on stage right type of thing and then there's a sprinkle of the the cmg or the lending right so the real estate agent is very similar to that they need to mm-hmm. really be comfortable um, with the idea that they are the products, right? And so a lot of people, it's hard for them to talk about themselves. It's hard for them to really embrace the concept that they are the product, right? right. So, right. you know, what are your thoughts on, on that concept? Yeah, I mean, you definitely are. You're, you're selling yourself. You're selling yourself every day in everything that you do. And so let's, let's be honest. In today's world, I, I would say more times than not that people don't know one brokerage from another. No, they don't care right. what color the sign is. They don't right. care any of that kind they of stuff. They care about who they're working with. They will look you up and research you. They care what other people are saying about you, but right. they don't care what the what colored vest or shirt that you're wearing. No, They care about who you are. So yeah, I, I fully agree with that. And they care if you're confident because people pick up on that. They're going to sniff you out if you're not confident. And, right. and, they, and so that's where you've got to run it like a business. You've got to own your business. So I'd say let's talk about a few few points on what yeah. does that look like? Owning your business, investing in your business, you mean that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that's one all that them. dry stuff, you yeah, know, that, all that boring dry thing stuff, that, yeah. you know. I was, you know, we're uh, not talking about the, the floor plans and the, the buildings. And the yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, how about starting with this? I, I met a new agent recently. It wasn't one of ours. Thank you very much. It, But uh, he, I asked him for a business card and he said, well, you know, I haven't bought any business cards yet. I'm waiting until I sell my first home before I do that. And, um, you know, most of our agents know here that you don't dare ask Papa Bear for a open house sign as an example, okay? (laughs) Because here's my reply. If you were looking for a carpenter to build you a home, this is, let's say this is going to be your dream home and you had some carpenters lined up because there's a lot of carpenters out there like there's a lot of realtors out there. And the one you really liked, super nice guy, and it seemed like he knew what he was talking about. And you said, Hey, if I choose you for my carp- as my carpenter to build my dream home that I've always wanted, do you have your own hammer? And he says, well, no, but I can borrow one. I'm going to borrow one from my friend um, Sally, you know, to, to, and, I, and I'm saying, you know what? I'm never going to pick a, bar- a, a, a builder, a contractor who doesn't have his own hammer. Don't expect to be that agent. <laughs> that's going to list somebody's home or have somebody's open house without the stinking tools required to do so. It's a, yeah. First of all, what are you telling the, not only the consumer, which is obviously a big thing, what are you telling the universe? 
yeah. about your belief, your conviction in your in your skill level when you won't make an investment in open house signs because you're afraid you may be losing one or you may not do another open house for a while or whatever. That's going to bleed into everything that you do. It yeah. will. People don't realize that. Yeah. It bleeds into everything. Your conviction level. Again, they got to believe the messenger before the message matters. Proactive versus reactive. That's right. Yeah. And I think it starts with step one. Like, hey, a lot of people get so super excited and they jump over here and they haven't even taken the time to get organized. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I will say many people in our professions, salespeople, uh, maybe deep personalities, we lack organization. No, so no. it takes us to actually, <laughs> hey, today I'm not leaving my room, mm -hmm. right, until I get my business plan written. And what does the business plan look like, right? It may look really detailed. It may look a less detailed. But at least you have a roadmap towards your success. What is it going to look like, right? I would yeah. love to be a buyer's agent. I would love to be a listing agent. Or I want to do both. And, you know, kind of getting organized, you know, set it up for success. You guys at Realty One Group offer a lot of tools, which mm -hmm. is huge, right? So, right. A, if you're really new to the business find a company that you can team up with that provides those extra tools to help you be organized if you're not one that is organized, right? With your CRMs and different things, because it would be crazy. So many people, they get so excited and they get all these leads and then they're like, who, who am I supposed to talk to, right? Because there's no organization. <laughs> right. It's all right. like, oh, it's on that napkin or it's over here, you know, right. on that. And that's how I used to be until right. I decided that I needed to get organized. And you'll find that I have books, you know, and, and CRMs and different mm -hmm. things, because at least I know everything's in one location right. in my purse. I just grab, you know, grab and go type of thing. So, you know, getting organized is huge. And I think one of the things that I would say to you is write your mission and your vision and your goals. So if you don't know where you're going, maybe your first goal for your first year is to help five families, you know, or mm -hmm. hit a certain dollar figure. Or, you know, make enough money to pay off that car loan, whatever your goal is, but write it down so you have someplace, you know, that you know you're headed to. Mm -hmm. um, and then what is your message? I think that would be one more thing I would reference way at the beginning. What do you want to be known for? You know, um, what is that message that you really want to continue to say? Because that will start your branding um, and start to help you lead into that solid brand. So that's kind of what I would think at the beginning uh, yeah. when I'm starting out to be the CEO of my business. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the business plan is the very first thing that I start with, with every single brand new agent is we don't do anything else. I mean, other, you know, they've gone through the onboarding with, you know, all sure. of that stuff. But as a, as their coach, we start down we're like, okay, let's do a business plan. But you know why? Because nothing else matters. Right. At that point. Until we get clarity on what you want to right. achieve. Mm -hmm. And this is your, your business plan. This, yeah. I'm not bringing these goals right. to the table. Right. You are bringing these goals. Right. So nothing right. matters in anything that we do until we get clarity on what you want to achieve. And so that's the very first thing that we do. And so, you know, just a high level overview. Yes. Business plan. Bring that clarity and then break it down. Mm -hmm. Break it down. Uh, to the smallest bits that you can, and you want to track that. Just like Monty, you know, I've shared with him, you know, our goals for the year. You know, I break it down to exactly how many leads that we're going to uh, close on each type of a lead. You know, is it internet? Is it from an open house? Is it from referrals, sphere of influence? You know, all these different places. I'm not just saying, okay, we want to close 70 homes. I'm saying, okay, where are every one of these going to come from? And then, and this is where my C personality kicks in. I look at, okay, well, if this internet leads, then I need to have, you know, a hundred different leads for one transaction. So it means, let's see, 100, and I start multiplying that out, and you got like, oh, you need 70,000 leads. I'm just throwing numbers <laughs> off the top of my head. But you know what? At least I am clear on what we got to right, do. And, right. and every single day, we're tracking that. So that, you know, come August, we're not like, oh, shoot. We're not right. even close to our goal. No, right. I know exactly where we're at. You right. know why? Because I treat it like a business. But but you you said something really critical there, Jason, when somebody is newer to the business and, and says, okay, look, I want to sell, like Carrie Ann said, five homes that first year, or let's say 10 homes. You don't just look at that lump as X number. You break that That's lump up. That's just pie up. in the sky at that point. Yeah, it is. You break it down. How many, okay, let me see. That 10 doesn't look so intimidating if I break, let's see, mm -hmm. I'm going to do two at an open house. I'm going to do two circle of influence. I'm going to do one with calling expired. So I'm going to do, you know, and so forth and break it down. And all of a sudden, that 10 is far more palatable because yeah. you only have to do two of this kind and only one of those kind and so forth. And so it gives you some, while well, you're diver diversifying your skills. Yeah, and now you see, okay, well, if I've got to get two from an open house, 
how many open houses do I need to do? Right. Well, right. guess what? If I'm doing open houses and I haven't got my two, guess what? I got to keep doing open houses. Right. And maybe, maybe I need to get better right. at my open houses. See, as a coach, I know that uh, the lack of production really comes down to two different things. That is, it's either uh, you're lazy and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. and or it's a skill set issue. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. one I can help you with, the other I can't. And I think too. Some of us, I don't think, are late. Lazy is a hard word, right? Because yes, Sorry, some are. I'm just direct. <laughs> no, no, I love it. But some some people are. But I also think, like recently, I started this uh, eating concept that I don't eat until twelve o'clock to eight, for no other reason that I am trying to train myself. Now, keep in mind, this is only eating. I don't have to go run five miles. Like I'm starting off with slow commitments. But I'm training myself with something like that to say, if I can do that and I can do that for a long period of time, I can then do other things that I said would never be possible, right, type of thing. So I think a lot of people new in our industries, they start and then they stop because they don't truly give it themselves that daily commitment like you're talking about, right? Like, I think it's easy. Like, I start working out and I consider myself lazy because I make it two weeks and I'm like, yeah. I got better things to do. I'd rather go close alone in eight days, you know, than right. run, you know, three miles type of thing. But, you know, there's, there's that connection too. Of if it's I'm going to drop something like that, am I going to drop something else, you know, mm-hmm. in my business? So trying to find things that push yourself, like Monty made me do that dancing, you know, thing <laughs> that was hard, like super, super hard. Mm-hmm. And I didn't say very nice things about Monty for a period of time <laughs> as I was dancing. Um, but I was there very thankful after all of that because it forced me to stay committed. It forced me to have to step out of my comfort zone, that, you know, type of thing. So for, uh, for people in our industries, finding those little small things that have nothing to do with our business, right? Mm-hmm. But force us to physically push ourselves out yep. of our comfort zones to be able to mm-hmm. then be comfortable doing things within the, the business mm-hmm. that we're doing, like the open houses, like you say, well, right? And here's, you know, let, just to share on that, um, if, if you're if you're working for somebody, you're back at a W two, you may not like everything that you're doing at that job. It may be the greatest job. You may love what you do, but you're always going to have things that you don't enjoy. Mm-hmm. But do you just not do it? No, no, you do it because that's part of your job. It's part of your job. You mm-hmm. want a paycheck? You got to keep doing it, mm-hmm. right? Well, mm-hmm. you've got to have that same mindset. And yeah, I'm I, and I'm all about high performance. So you got to keep that same mindset. And if you're not, then guess what? Uh, once the uh, the boss comes around and has a, a sit down with you, it's not going to be a good conversation, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So you know, going back to you know, are you lazy? It's like, well, are you lazy? Are you distracted? What's going on? You need to get back on track, and that comes down to your commitment level. How bad do you want this? Is this a side hobby? Is this a? Is this just something that sounded fun? I mean, because here's the thing: it's uh, it's time to uh, you know get real with it or get out mm-hmm. of it. Because it, it. Yeah. It, it, you're costing yourself a lot of money and a lot of hardship, if not. Uh, you can make a great business out of this. We all know that. And, and I love it. I thrive off of it. I, I enjoy it with the passion or I wouldn't even be here talking to you guys. Mm-hmm. And same, uh, I could probably say the same for you guys. It's, but I, I'm not saying that it's all just, you know, roses and, you know, daisies or whatever you call it, you know, sugar plums, <laughs> you know, there are times it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's hard, yeah. but that's why more people don't succeed at it. And, and you know what, you're going to get knocked down yeah. and that's where you got to have bounceability. You know, when you bat, when you hit the ground, you got to bounce back up and get back to work. So as long as you keep getting back up and keep going on, you're still a success. I mean, you're still working. Uh, you're only a failure if you don't get back up. This is you such know, the COVID-19 concept for those people that are W-2. Now, keep in mind, in a, the lending world, we're w 2 but we're fully commissioned. So if we don't close a loan, we don't make any money. I, we actually own the, owe the company money, <laughs> technically. Oh. So it's a really bad situation. Um, but what I learned through this COVID being forced to work at home type of thing, nobody is watching out for me. Nobody is see, the, the front person in my office is not watching me make it into the front door by nine o'clock, right? Nobody is holding me accountable. So this was huge, right? Meaning this taught me a lot because I think real estate agents don't have 
that whole accountability, right? Meaning they can get up whatever time they want. They can yeah. go to bed whatever time they want. They can choose to make this call or choose not to make that call. So, you know, you talked about that business plan and then maybe your daily routine, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't have to get dressed. You know, I could have worn a ball cap. Nobody would have seen me, but I will tell you, I got more done forcing myself to be sitting here by nine o'clock every morning, you know, mm-hmm. uh, every single day. And, and, you know, didn't take a lunch break, just like I didn't take, do that at the, at the office. Right. So you're just staying right. committed. So what are people doing, you know, when you don't have those, those forced accountabilities, you know, like you say, you go from a W2 right. to maybe that 1099 and you're, nobody's holding your hand or slapping your hand, you know, and uh, I think that's if a, you don't do it. one of the biggest downfalls is the accountability piece. And because now they're, you, you have this guilty pleasure of just doing whatever you want to do at any point yeah. in time in the day. Well, I think it comes back to bite you in the butt as well, you it know, will. because it you will. don't have that accountability. You're not, you're, you're not going into the office. You're not doing the things a lot right. of times. And I'm seeing there's some agents that are, their productivity is floundering right now because they're missing that, that element of, of, and that's one of the reasons why we want to have this talk today, Carrie Ann, because it's pivot time. It's no it question is. about it. It's pivot time for right. those of have caught themselves, you know, you know, four or five months into the year and not where they want to be. I think it's important that we get real with that moment, get real with our experience right yeah. now, get real with the rest of the year. And we have to make a decision. And that decision is necess- not necessarily easy. The decision is, do I stay on my belief on track to do to get the end result that I had when we started this year? Or am I going to readjust it because of this distraction that's happened? It's totally up to you, and there's no right or wrong. But I remember, I'll never forget <clears throat> what the first year that I set a goal to make $200,000. That was about six years into my business, okay? And I remember going out, I remember we were in July, and I was nowhere near where I needed to be. And I remember going out, having this talk with myself and saying those exact words. And I didn't have somebody like you guys to help coach me back then. You know, this was 30 years ago. And mm-hmm. and I said, okay, I've got to make a decision. Am I going to hit this goal that I set for myself? Now, is my goal, nobody else's goal, my mm-hmm. goal, do I own that goal? And am I going to change my behavior to equal the results that I was looking for five months, six months earlier, or am I going to take the easier route. And again, there's no judgment in that, but I had to make that decision. My point is I'm, I'm encouraging folks to listening to this, make that decision. Don't ignore it. Don't wish it wasn't reality because it is a reality. It's been a a distraction unless you've kept your head down this whole time, which a lot of folks haven't. And that's cool. Everybody's trying to, you know, stay, you know, correct with the old, the situation. But now it's time to make a decision because we're coming up over that hump and we're now we're facing, here's where we're at. What are we going to do with that? And to that point, this is another reason it's so important to track your numbers. Absolutely. To know your numbers because, uh, case in point, because right. of the COVID happened, you know, the the amount of closings that I had allocated through uh, open houses, I had to adjust that. Right. So I moved right. them into different compartments. Well, right. doing so, that means that we've got to work harder on those others. Right. So, but that wouldn't have happened if I just had one big lump mm-hmm. number at the mm-hmm. end. So that's- Yeah, and for, for lending, you know, the pricing compressed. So what I was making on a loan two months ago from a business standpoint, I was making only half of that. So if I was to still heal as a business owner, right, as the CEO of my business, if I was still going to be able to meet my bills and pay them timely, that now means I have to increase the unit so I can still make the same, you know, number. So you're right. We have to learn to pivot. Um, You know, and a lot of people talk about the word hustle, you know, it's, it's a negative word. It's a great word. You know, many people have different, you know, views on it. You know, I do think if you're starting out, you do have to hustle, right? right? You get to a level of your business where now you can work to six to 12 yeah. and you can work a full day or four to 12 and then you can have your afternoons off, right? Or you can buy more freedom. But at the beginning of our businesses, if you really have an outlook of where you want to go and you really have the need and want to and the decision to commit to hitting your goals, you have to, right? You have right. to um, not let anything distract you. And the word uh, excuses drive me bonkers. Like, <laughs> you know, and it's, I, I don't put, that's ex- excuse for me. Like I know I'm making excuses and I know that I'm going to have the outcome of that, but I only allow excuses Saturdays and Sundays. Like those are my free days. Right. Mm-hmm. I, for me, I'm able to 
you know, do my, my world and my business, even though I work seven days a week, but I don't, I choose not, I give my little, a little bit of freedom, you know, on the weekends, but what are you going to put um, on you? Um, so when an excuse does come out, you actually understand that that's an excuse and you just choose to pause and say, you know what, I'm making an excuse. I have to overcome that. And I have to hustle through that. Yeah. Uh, and I love the, my personally, I love the word hustle. Um, and the way I see it is that we all have different desires in life. You know, there are some that hustle is what they love and what they do their whole life. There's some that, like you're saying, that we hustle at the beginning so that we can uh, do what we want to do when we want to do it down the road. Um, you know, whatever that is for you, you know, that that's up to you. I like the word hustle. I mean, if I'm not working on something, if I don't have my laptop in my my in my lap or working on something, I, I I'm fidgeting. I, I don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, you know, sun up to sundown. And that's just the way I am. Um, Me too, brother. I, that's why I like you so much. You know, I, I, 67 years old, I'm working longer hours and harder, not harder, but I mean more than I've ever worked in my entire life, but loving it more, yeah. making a difference in more people's lives. I mean, to have, now we have around 110, 120 agents, something like that at Realty One Group Music City. I'm telling you, I am just digging so much helping these agents hopefully not have to spend 36 years to, to become a billion dollar agent, you know, but they're, you know, they're learning these little things that you learn. It takes a lot, you know, it takes being out there in the trenches sometimes to learn just yeah. these little changes, you know, just like a class we're coming having, having soon with uh, Ellis Grossman on, on, on uh, verbiage, on uh, scripts, on, on, uh, you know, the saying the right things, you know, it's just, is, is that a great class? It's we're having amazing. that next week. We're going to be, we're, yeah. we, is, is, and we need to get on, but our next episode, those are listening now, be sure and tune into the next one because yeah. Ellis Grossman is going to teach you dialogues that are empowering. Yeah. Absolutely he, empowering. Master. Absolute master. Uh, he, he truly I think, the, I think we, what we talked about today is, you know, if you choose to and commit to being the CEO of your own business, Start with being organized, start with a foundation, figure out where you want to go um, and then move in the direction of now, how do I get in front of the people, right? And that's a whole other class, I think, and a whole other yeah. conversation about, yes. you know, how do you get eyes on you? How do you create the curiosity and turn heads and different things? That's okay, at least one, that's that at least one. one. Oh, yeah. So we need to talk about that, Karen, because uh, you are a master you at are. that. You are an absolute master at that. Well, it's a great, great topic and, and I love it, but I'm, you know, it, that's the thing, right? Like we not only have to be organized, like you're so great, Jason, because you're the organization piece, right? So you need that piece in your business. And if you are not one, you have to find a number two to help you with that, right? So if you are one that's not that organized, yes. but then you also, not only do you have to run the books, you have to manage your finances, right? Because you mm-hmm. need to make sure you have enough cash to be able to do some things uh, for your business. And then you have to be the marketer, right? And so there's a lot that you have to do when you are the CEO of your business. But today was an amazing talk about a great start and that foundation. Thank you, Jason. You always bring yeah. so many great insights to, I appreciate to that. Amen. To I love that. that. Amen to that. Absolutely. Great seeing hey, you, everybody. So love to continue to have you join us on the Talk of Music City. We just appreciate you tuning in each week. Be sure to check out talkofmusiccity.com for more podcasts. We will see you next week.